first and foremost, good afternoon. I would like to thank uh, Professor Bosso for her very interesting contribution. In this uh, second uh, contribution of ours, in this module, we will uh, present a number of practical applications uh, for the improvement of colloidal stability and color in red. So, since uh, Professor Bosso was very clear in uh, her contribution, we will first and foremost talk about uh, colloidal stabilization, the involved macromolecules and the mechanisms that are involved. We will also talk about cold, which is a technology, a technique rather, that has been used for years now. Uh, whose side effect is that of obtaining colloidal stabilization in red. So we will also see a number of alternatives, uh, specifically the uh, best performing products uh, that permit uh, to increment uh, this uh, activ activity. We will talk about Mont Morillo night, uh, and we will talk about manoproteins and gamma ribic as protector colloids. Here you see the slide that Professor Bosso uh, showed in relation to the interaction between the macromolecules involved uh, in a colloidal equilibrium. Um, and this is taken from work by Professor Marangon. I would like only to remind you of the fact that uh, this equilibrium, the colloidal equilibrium, is a very subtle, thin one, so to say, delicate, I might say. And uh, we have the involvement of proteins, polyphenols, and polysaccharides, which can be of endogenous or exogenous uh, uh, origin if they are added. Now, uh, refrigeration and the use of cold. As we said, this is a process uh, that is used uh, and has been used for quite some time now. It is certainly effective. It leads to uh, durable results uh, and it gives a very good uh, tartaric uh, stability and parallel to that colloidal stability and uh, color stability in reds. And yet there are some uh, uh, cons as well in that uh, you certainly need to have a system, an equipment, and operating costs are also significant. In addition, I might add that this is not a very sustainable technology. Furthermore, um, there can be problems uh, in terms of uh, color loss uh, and uh, um, especially in red. So what about alternative uh, solutions? We can, uh, we can uh, eliminate the colloids that contribute to instability with the bentonite, with the right uh, product, and we will talk about absolute gold, or the alternative might be that of using uh, colloids uh, that are uh, polysaccharides, uh, which work as protecting uh, colloids. And in that case, uh, we will use uh, see the usage of fender color and delete uh, fender color monoprotein. Delete is uh, a gamma arabic. We talk about uh, uh, bentonites uh, first. Well, um, we have been. Uh, trading with bentonites and producing rubber bentonites for 70 years now. So bentonite is a uh, product which uh, um, actually is a group of products with different features and different effects on wine. And these uh, differences indeed are relevant. Here on the slide, you see a number of uh, steps of the product, production product from the selection of the raw material to the quality control of uh, the end product and application trials uh, on uh, the wine. Activation of bentonite is what we have to focus on. It entails uh, the inclusion into the platelets of bentonites, uh, um, sodium ions uh, that uh, can coordinate around them a number of molecules of water because they are solvatable ions. Uh, and so they can give the product uh, a very uh, wide active surface. And yet bentonite is not only activated um, 
in that way, there are additional parameters, uh, and I talk about chemical and physical uh, parameters uh, that can be used for activation purposes. And I think of solvents and temperature, or even the process of a macronization uh, of crashing rather of, ben rather of bentonite whereby you have a potential increase in the active surface of bentonite by means of this physical process. Now, here uh, you see on this slide a number of preliminary uh, works uh, that were performed a number of years ago by Piacenza University in, in relation to the usage of our bentonite uh, to stabilize uh, color in reds. Here, this line represents uh, the colloidal stability profile of a Valpolicella wine that had been heated uh, at different temperatures. The graph shows uh, the increase in turbidity uh, due to the uh, thermal um, activity. And uh, the next dotted line uh, pertains uh, to uh, the same wine treated with bentonite. Uh, calcium bentonite. Then the other three dotted lines uh, represent uh, the stability profiles, colloidal stability profiles uh, of the wines after being treated with three different bentonites uh, obtained um, um, in different ways, uh, which means that the activation process is fundamental in order to obtain a highly performing um, product. The bentonite that has been identified as being uh, the one that works best in terms of the colloidal stability of reds is absolute gold. It is a Mont uh, Morillo uh, night, uh, which is uh, the name of the most active component of bentonite, uh, and uh, we even uh, exceed uh, values of 95%. Activation is exclusive and uh, it permits to have a very high active uh, surface. It is uh, a powder and it is very easy to use at the same time though. As Professor um, uh, Bosso showed, we have data about uh, Barbera wine, which I would like uh, to also talk about and comment upon. And it has been treated with uh, different bentonites. First, we have uh, the colloidal stability test. We see there that uh, the test wine had a certain stability and after being treated with absolute gold, uh, the uh, instability went down uh, under the N uh, two NTU critical uh, threshold value. The same was uh, made and reached uh, by repeating the test uh, six months after bottling and then 12 months after bottling. The a general bentonite did not perform in the same way. Then uh, on the right hand side, you see the results uh, of uh, the shock test, uh, which means the simulation of uh, a transport uh, of uh, uh, wine at 40 degrees for a number of days. In this uh, case, uh, um, you will have an increase in turbidity, and that is present also after three months and six months. You see and you notice that the wine treated with absolute gold did not entail an increase in turbidity, while the wine treated with the general bentonite did not achieve the same performance and result. Let's now have a look at a number of interesting uh, experiences made in relation to the usage of protector colloids uh, for the stabilization of the color of the red wine. The graph um, tells about an experience made uh, with uh, a red wine that was uh, highly unstable in terms of color, uh, stored at minus four degrees uh, for seven days. Here on the y-axis, uh, you see the drop in uh, the color intensity after uh, chilling. In the test wine, the drop was approximately 1.6 color points. The next bar uh, bars show what happened in uh, uh, analogous uh, similar wines treated uh, with uh, several additives. Uh, here in green, you have the results of the treatment uh, with uh, gamma arabic. Uh, the um, dextrorotary gamma arabic did not entail an improvement in uh, colloidal stability. Rather, we had a drop that was even higher things went better with uh, the uh, level rotary uh, gamma arabic specific this one 
as you know, uh, the um, uh, addition of hydroxymethyl cellulose in uh, red improves uh, the stability of the color. Then the uh, addition of manoproteins had this trend. There were different developments in, depending on the type of manoprotein that was added. Specifically, this manoprotein uh, had a stabilizing effect on the color of uh, the red wines. Manoproteins, uh, well, they are polysaccharides uh, that uh, are derived from uh, the cell wall of yeasts. We know the properties uh, which entail an increase in uh, the proteic and tartaric stability of a wine. These components act as colloids in wine, but also in this case, uh, we can say that uh, there is not one M. P. Uh, it is a class of compounds uh, with different molecular weights and compositions in that there can be a more prosaic uh, or glucidic uh, portion in a manoprotein. And differences depend, uh, of course, on the strain of yeast they were extracted from and the way by which they have been extracted, which can be enzymatic or it can be physical, certainly different extraction uh, systems lead to different products. What we see here are uh, the performances of one specific manoprotein, which is fender column color. And again, I offer you the uh, results uh, which pertain to the addition of fender color on uh, the Barbera wine. The colloidal stability test uh, for the untreated wine here um, showed that after uh, fender color was added, uh, it was a major improvement in terms of colloidal stability and that at bottling time and after six months and after 12 months. Another manoprotein with different features did not provide the same outcome. Things are even more evident. Uh, when we consider the outcome of the shock test, uh, which is uh, the heating of uh, the wine after bottling, after three months and after six months. And again, we see that colloidal stability uh, is improved, uh, especially in uh, the wine uh, added with fender color, while other manoproteins uh, even had the opposite effect. What you see there is the variability of molecular weight, uh, which we can uh, see in uh, manoproteins uh, with uh, uh, molecular weight uh, uh, ranging from five uh, to many more kilodaltons, as you see on the slide. The molecular weights, uh, which are of interest uh, for wines, uh, are, in, are in between 30 and 40 kilodaltons. Uh, Fender color is just above that uh, threshold uh, in that its molecular weight uh, ranges in between 40 and 60 kilodaltons. Even though these are bulkier macro, uh, micromolecule, macromolecules, uh, we saw that uh, um, there is no negative effect in terms of filtering in that the filtrability index uh, is not impacted negatively um, after addition or after a few days uh, uh, from adding of the product, from the adding of the product. Due to the complexity of the wine and of the colloidal component, it is always important to uh, test uh, that it is so uh, um, in real life. So, uh, gamma rabic. Gamma rabic is a natural polysaccharide which belongs to the Arabinogalactine family. It has a protein uh, core. Uh, and uh, various branches, uh, sugar branches are linked to that. Botanically speaking, uh, we can obtain Arabic gum from Acacia Senegal, uh, which is the level rotary uh, uh, Arabic gum, and then the Acacia Seyal, uh, which is uh, dextro rotary. It is not the, only the rotary uh, feature that differs, also the nitrogen content and the average molecular weight. 
as you, you can see there, as a matter of fact, it is interesting to see that uh, the duration is very different, uh, even though the molecular weight is the same in the dextrorotary, the radius uh, is uh, um, more limited. And this gives us an indication about the steric effect of uh, the uh, molecule. The, the smaller the radius, uh, the um, higher the compactness of the molecule, molecule, which means that the, the Senegal uh, gamma arabic is more extended in a way, and it has a colloidal behavior, which is very different. So we saw that Seyal is more interesting in terms of tataric stability, while uh, uh, which rather improves the ability of color in uh, in uh, in red. So we made a number of trials, and uh, here you see tests made with uh, Delita Zakasha Senegal, which is uh, a solution gum which was obtained uh, by means of a process which is respectful of the molecular features. Uh, uh, of uh, of the product. Here we see a test uh, that was made uh, on a red uh, wine with a slight instability of color that was kept at minus uh, four degrees centigrade for six days. In this case, we see that uh, adding uh, the lead at 100 milliliters per hectoliter permitted to avoid uh, precipitation that was uh, present uh, in the control wine with uh, a different increase uh, in uh, turbidity and filtrability, which was lower in the delete uh, wine. Another test that was performed in a Merlot wine with a high color instability showed that uh, the uh, effectiveness uh, um, was partial for the lid, uh, while uh, for a um, dextrorotary uh, gamma arabic, basically, there was no influence uh, at all. There is another aspect which we need uh, to underline, and it is the organoleptic, uh, organoleptic uh, effect due uh, to the uh, lower reactivity of tannins uh, due to the action of uh, the uh, proteins of uh, saliva, which has an, infact, an, inf an, inf an impact sorry, on the astringency perception. To conclude, we might say that uh, we know that there are interesting indications uh, which make it possible to increase uh, the colloidal stability uh, and the stability of the color in red so without using uh, cold uh, uh, stabilization processes or only or using cold stabilization only uh, partially. The most and best performing products uh, were bentonites, uh, um, absolute gold, and in terms of uh, um, protector um, colloids, uh, fender color, which is a monoprotein, and elite, uh, which is uh, a gamma rabbic. Having said that, I thank you very much for your attention, and I grasp uh, this opportunity to um, uh, thank uh, Professor Bosso, to thank uh, the entire staff uh, of uh, Eno Forum.